everyone, and thanks for coming back. And today we will be talking about CMMI. So today we will be answering the following questions. What is the CMMI process? How do you plan and track work in CMMI? How do you define a CMMI product backlog item? And what are the CMMI workflows? Content for this session will come from visualstudio.com. Overview for Visual Studio Team Services and TFS, and this is what the site looks like. CMMI, defining the capability maturity model integration CMMI process. What is CMMI? The CMMI process supports the following work item types to plan and track work, tests, feedback, and code review. These artifacts are created when you create a team project using the CMMI process. These are based on the capability maturity model integration process. So I'll we'll talk a little bit about this. So here you have your portfolio backlog that has your epic and your feature. Beneath that in your backlog, you have your requirement and your task. Also within your backlog, you have your bug, which has a subset of tasks. For issue tracking, you are tracking issues via a change request, a review, an issue or a risk. For feedback, you have a feedback request and a feedback response. For testing, you have a test plan, a test suite, a test case, shared steps, and shared parameters. For code review, you have a code review request and code review response. So I also want to talk about what these five steps mean for the capability uh, maturity model integration. So there are five levels. Level one is initial, process is unpredictable, poorly controlled, and, and reactive. Level two is process characterized for projects and is often reactive. Level three, process characterized for the organization and is proactive. So if you are a CMMI level three organization, then that means your processes are defined. So you're in a very good spot. In level four, process is measured and controlled, which means it's, it is quant quantitatively managed. Level five, you focus on continuous improvement and you are optimizing. Plan and track work with CMMI. Teams plan their project by capturing features and requirements. When teams work in sprints, they define tasks and link them to requirements. To gain insight into a rollup of requirements across teams, program managers link requirements to a feature. Blocking issues are tracked using issues. So you define your stories and your requirements. You need to create your backlog, prioritize your backlog, estimate your work, and assign your work. Then you'll need to manage your portfolios, add epics or features, group backlog items. Then you need to manage bugs, capture bugs, triage bugs, resolve and close bugs, and then manage issues, capture issues, track dependencies, and query issues. Okay, list work items with CMMI. You can use shared work item queries to list work items based upon their types, such as change requests, bugs, tasks, and requirements. So here you can see you got a lot more different types of queries than you do with the other types of, of um, processes. So you have shared queries, you change manager shared queries, you have development and testing shared queries, you have planning and tracking shared queries, and troubleshooting. So you get a whole lot more of information and metric tracking and uh, work item queries to play with. CMI product backlog item. Now this slide is quite messy, but there's a lot of information that we need to cover and I don't want it to try to get it all on one slide. So let's go ahead and get this started. So description, provide enough detail for estimating how much work will be required to implement the requirement. Impact assessment, the custom impact of not implementing this requirement. What happens if this requirement does not get done and how will the customer feel about it? Value area. It's one of two areas, either architectural or business. Architectural means that it's the technical services to implement business features that deliver the solution. And the business services that will fulfill customers or stakeholders' needs that directly deliver the customer value to support the business. This value is default. Size. Estimate the amount of work required to complete a requirement using any unit of measurement your team prefers. I like to use our hours. 
Original estimate, the amount of estimated work required to complete a task. Typically, this field doesn't change after it is assigned. Start and finish date. The target dates for when the work will start or finish. These fields are filled in by Microsoft Project when you use it for scheduling. Priority, this field is required. These are the one, two, or three. One, product cannot ship without them. Two, which is default. Product cannot ship without the item, but it doesn't have to be addressed immediately. Number three, implementation of the item is optional based upon resources, time, and risk. Triage, this is required. So it's default value is pending, or you can also have more info, info received, and triage. So this indicates the type of triage decision that is pending for the work item. Use this field when the work item is in the proposed state and specify one of the following values I talked about earlier. Blocked is typically is something not allowing you to do this. It's either yes or no. Committed, this is required. Indicates whether the requirements is committed in the project or not. You can specify yes or no. Integrated in, uh, product build number that incorporates the requirement, change request, or fixes a bug. User acceptance test, this is required. The status of the user acceptance test for a requirement, you can specify one of the following values. Pass, fail, not ready, which is default. Ready, skipped, or info received. Subject matter experts, the name of the team members who are familiar with the customer area that this requirement represents. Wow, that was a, a mouthful, but like I told you, CMMI is very much involved, and this is what the CMMI backlog item will look like. CMMI workflow states. These diagrams show the main progression and regression states for the requirement, bug, and task work item types. So for your, your requirement, once it is new, it is proposed. Then it goes into active after it's been accepted. Then it goes into resolved after code complete and system test has passed. Then it goes into closed after the validation test has passed. And then it can, it can, if it's closed an error, it can follow this path or it can go straight back into active. And also if it's proposed and rejected, it goes straight into closed. But when a bug is new, it is proposed, active, resolved, and closed, just like before. Um, if it's closed, it can go back to active. If it's rejected, then it goes into closed. Task, proposed, active, resolved, and closed, just like the other states. Um, but if the task is closed, it can go back to being proposed, or it can go back to being active. If the task is rejected, it can go from proposed to closed. CMMI workflow progression. The typical workflow progression for a requirement is the product owner creates a requirement in the proposed state with the default reason, new requirement. The product owner updates the status to active when they begin work to implement it. The team updates the status to resolved when code development is finished and system tests have passed. Lastly, the team or product owner moves the requirement to close when the product owner agrees that it has been implemented according to, this, to the acceptance criteria and pass all validation tests. Well, that's all that I have for now, and thanks for watching.